Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our video First Look and a quick review of a smart keyboard. It's a Bluetooth keyboard slash folio cover for the Microsoft Surface Pro 3 and 4. It hatches magnetically onto the same docking uh, connectors that we've seen since the original Surface RT. However, because the Pro 3 and 4 um, are slightly larger in terms of the overall screen and body size, uh, this allows you to still cover and protect your screen. It's not going to work as flawlessly with uh, the smaller, around 10-inch size of the original Surface RT and the Surface 2. However, it will still connect, and because it uses Bluetooth to wirelessly type and enter text, obviously it's still a feature that will work with uh, virtually any tablet on the market. Otherwise, it sells on Amazon for about 35 bucks, which is a massive discount when compared to you know the official keyboards produced by Microsoft, uh, which aren't wireless, and those can retail for 150 bucks if you get the Type or the Touch keyboards. Um, this really is a huge discount, so if you're looking to save a little, but this is still quite a quality piece of kit, you should take a closer look at this. Uh, comes in a number of colors. We have just the gray version here. The back features some basic specs about this keyboard. Again, it's for the Pro version. And otherwise, you can see the weight is a 345 grams. Still relatively lightweight, although uh, it's a, a bit thicker than the original touch keyboard. It does have a, like a magnetic interface, uses Bluetooth. They say that it's, magnet, it's uh, mechanical keys, but really it's just a chiclet or island style keyboard. So it's not as clicky as an actual mechanical keyboard, more like a pseudo mechanical. Uh, there's access to a pretty colorful key lay layout although it's not backlit, uh, it still works pretty nicely and it's a full-size keyboard which is always nice to see. Uh, in the packaging, we have access to the keyboard itself. We'll take a closer look at this in a moment. What I want to point out quickly is the charging cable is proprietary, so it uses a separate uh, design from the manufacturer. It's this magnetic charging cable that uses this tiny little pin uh, and also connects into any USB source, either a computer or into a wall outlet. So how you charge this thing is using this little pin on the side here and you align this magnetic dot which does work fairly well although sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get used to and then you plug the other side into a power source maybe even in onto the surface itself to draw some power it does work fairly well although it's another cable that you really can't lose otherwise you're in trouble and it takes about two hours to completely charge the magnetic wireless keyboard uh, afterwards i got about i would say three weeks of usage out of this before i need to recharge it again so it does work quite well and also includes a rather generously sized uh, touchpad although it doesn't have a forced click everywhere you can only tap on the left and right keys it does support multi-touch gestures such as uh, scrolling and also going in and out, a pinch and zoom, so it does work pretty well. So obviously since it uses Bluetooth, instead of having the magnetic pins for data pins, it reduces that, although it still attaches using the same two dots onto the back of the surface. Um, the material choice being used here is quite similar to what Microsoft actually uses. It's a grippy, soft-touch rubber feel, but it's also made out of fabric, so it doesn't attract too many fingerprints. It's easy to clean and also quite soft when you're typing and putting your fingers on it. Uh, again, it is quite slim, a little bit thicker than, again, a touch keyboard, but not bad at all. You can see all the keys are individually raised about the surface since they are island style and chiclet, uh, which is, I think, the next best thing uh, in terms of modern keyboards uh, comfortable to use. As a whole, the keys have a nice amount of travel to them and they're pretty responsive and tactile. Because of the larger size of this uh, overall keyboard layout, I had no issues in terms of typing speed and accuracy. And after typing on it for about five minutes, I got really used to it and made very few errors. So definitely a great productivity uh, kind of keyboard. Touchpad, you know, it's kind of an area where I feel like some improvements could be made, mainly because you can only tap on these two little corners for the left and right click, and the actual action here isn't super tactile. But uh, all in all, not a very not a terrible experience either. And uh, for what it is, you know, for 35 bucks, I think you're getting a pretty good deal as far as keyboards go. So I'm going to attach this onto uh, a Surface actually. So the original Surface, uh, which again it still works with, but as a folio cover, it doesn't really work because it has a the surface here, as you can see, has a has a smaller size. It doesn't take up the full size. When you close it up, uh, there's a larger keyboard cover. Uh, but again, this is what the back looks like, a pretty nice uh, grippy material that doesn't attract too much dust either. Uh, but again, it still attaches the same way using the same mechanisms. So let's attach this on. You can see it attaches magnetically like so, and it's a very strong bond between the actual surface and the keyboard, just like with Microsoft's own keyboard. It's not going to fall out anytime soon. You can kind of rotate it, uh, tug on it, it still won't fall out, so it is extremely secure, which is nice to see. And then you can pop this thing at an angle and then of course comfortably use it for more productivity which is nice. Uh, one of the limitations of having Bluetooth, uh, I think, is 
you know, it's not terribly necessary on the surface line of tablets because Microsoft already had that uh, kind of proprietary pen system and data pens, which you could have used for text entry and for keyboard accessories. And uh, because it uses Bluetooth, you know, every time the tablet goes to sleep or if the keyboard runs out of power and goes to sleep, you have to repair and wake it up. And that takes a few seconds. It's not instantaneous like the official keyboard is. And that gets a little bit annoying. But again, that's part of the cost and part of the reasons why this is uh, less expensive. Um, with any other tablet out there that doesn't have this uh, pen based accessory dock already built in, you know, having a Bluetooth keyboard is great because it's one of the only options you have for faster text entry uh, compared to the virtual on-screen keyboard. But since the Surface already has this uh, pen, I kind of wish that they figured out a way just to use that same pen as opposed to, you know, making this a wireless keyboard. But it still works, and again, there's not too much lag as far as uh, typing and what occurs on, on screen, so that is fairly responsive and, and, and uh, instantaneous, which is nice to see. Again, when you close this thing up, if you have a original Surface or Surface 2, uh, this is the size difference between that and this keyboard really meant for the Pro version of the uh, Surface line. Doing a quick demo, we're going to try opening up a Microsoft Word and doing a typing test. As you can see, there's a slight amount of lag with the trackpad, um, ever, so, ever so slight, but uh, still not as responsive as the original Surface Touch or Type keyboards that uses that, again, data pen connector system as opposed to wireless Bluetooth. What is nice about this, however, is it's a little bit thicker than the, than the OEM uh, covers, which means that it's a bit more firm. So if you're typing on your lap, it uh, doesn't try to flex as much. So there are a few applications where this is quite beneficial. So we're gonna do a you know blank document here. I'm gonna tap on this. And then afterwards, I can start typing, perhaps just say, this is a test. And again, this is a very large and spacious keyboard. So you have a larger layout for all your keys and buttons, which is quite useful if you're typing out lar longer emails as well as let's say essays on your Surface or Surface Pro. So again, this is a test. And again, it works uh, fairly well. You can then highlight and of course uh, change the text, the font size, all those things are uh, easy to navigate on this device. Of course, if you're using this, this for gaming purposes, uh, the arrow keys on the sides are fairly responsive, but if you are relying on that trackpad, again, that slight lag is not gonna be ideal. But all in all, a very good typing experience. It's quite comfortable and the layout here is very, very generous. So at the end of the day, I would say this is a good alternative um, to the original Surface touch and type keyboards if you aren't you know, a fan of that more expensive of price tag, you're looking for maybe a, a wireless setup that you can then perhaps detach and then still um, you know, type. If you have the Surface at a, a further distance from a desk, you want to position it higher on a stand and still want to type down below, this would be a good option to consider. Uh, but otherwise, I still think the original makes a bit more sense if price wasn't a factor. Um, and take, doing a quick size comparison here between the first generation touch keyboard for the Surface, you can kind of tell that size difference here. So that is something to also note very quickly. Thanks for watching this video first look and quick review here at OS Reviews. You can check out more details about this wireless Bluetooth keyboard for the Microsoft Surface Pro in our official written review. But for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.